In today's video, I'll explain why your car might have low or no compression in one or more cylinders. Let's start things off by understanding how compression works and what signs indicate low compression. Compression happens when air and gas mix inside the engine's cylinders. It's an important step for the car to run and move. If there are problems with compression, you might encounter various car issues. If you try starting the engine and it misfires, idles roughly, or is hard to start, you might have a low compression issue, which is pretty clear, or the engine might not perform well, hesitating a lot during acceleration, and you might notice really bad gas mileage while driving. In the worst case, if none of the cylinders have compression, the car won't start at all. Now let's talk about why a car engine might have low compression by covering the most common reasons for it. Let's start with number one, worn timing belt or chain. Every engine has a timing belt or chain that connects the crankshaft and camshaft. If the timing belt gets damaged or breaks, the camshaft can't turn properly. This means it can't open or close the intake or exhaust valve correctly. As a result, the combustion in the cylinders gets messed up and gases can't escape properly. This leads to low compression. Number two, cracked cylinder head. The cylinder head is very important since it seals the combustion chamber and holds the valves. If it cracks, it can mess up compression by letting the air fuel mix or exhaust gases leak out. This not only makes combustion less efficient, but can also cause coolant to mix with the oil, making the engine perform even worse. Number three, leaky valves. In each cylinder, you have both intake and exhaust valves at the top. The intake valve gets fuel and air to start combustion, while the exhaust valve lets out the gases formed. If these valves get too hot, they might start leaking gas early, which messes with compression. Also, as valve seals get older, they can wear out, letting gases escape and lowering compression in the cylinder. Number four, cylinder wall damage. The cylinder walls have to be smooth and in good shape to seal well with the piston rings. If they get scratched or worn out or have any other damage, it can create spaces where compression can leak out. This means less pressure in the combustion chamber, making the engine perform poorly and have less power. Number five, head gasket failure. A gasket seals the space between the top of the engine and the cylinder head. So if this head gasket breaks or malfunctions, a small gap forms between the cylinder and its head. This creates what's called a blown head gasket, where gases leak out of the gap. This leads to low compression and a drop in performance. If the head gasket fails between two cylinders, both of them might have compression leaks. Number six, camshaft lobe wear. The camshaft commands the valves in the engine when to open and close with its lobes. But if these lobes wear down, the valves might not open fully or at the right times, messing up how the air and fuel get in and out. This can really drop compression because the valves might not seal right during the compression stroke, leading to less pressure in the combustion chamber. Number seven, holes in piston. You're likely familiar with the fact that an engine's cylinders have pistons. These pistons are usually made of aluminum alloy and are built to handle the power of combustion. But if the engine gets too hot, it can create hot spots on the piston. Over time, these spots can burn holes right through the piston. When this happens, gases start leaking through these holes, causing low compression. So how can you fix a low compression? To find out if your engine really has low compression, you'll need a compression gauge. Plan to set aside about 45 minutes for this, as it usually takes this long. If you don't have a compression gauge already, you can either buy one or take your car to a mechanic who can check the compression for you. Now, if you find low compression, the next move is to inspect the cylinders, pistons, valves, and gasket to spot any damage or breakage. Whatever's broken, you'll need to replace it. But be ready, it's a big job that takes time and money because the engine has to come out. And yes, it's true that diagnosing and fixing low compression issues in your engine can be a challenging task, but it's important for keeping your car running smoothly. By using a compression gauge and conducting thorough inspections, 
you can identify the problem areas and take the necessary steps to repair them. Remember, addressing low compression immediately can prevent further damage to your engine and your car in the long run. I hope this video helps you, and if you find this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe so we can assist you. Fix it.